Thank you very much. I'm Honorable Dr. Bernadette Lai. I'm the fourth vice president of the Pan African Parliament. I'm also the minority leader in the House of Sierra Leone Parliament. Uh, thank you, Honorable Dr. Lahai. Uh, terror attacks are on the increase globally, and Africa has not been spared. What is the pub stance with uh, regards to terrorism? Well, I think, uh, like all institutions in Africa, we should all be concerned about increasing terrorist activities increasing radicalization of especially our youth and increasing uh, uh, conflicts because terrorists happens mostly either where there are conflicts or once conflict happens then it can generate terrorism so whichever way you know we should try to avoid uh, the issue because it has far-reaching consequences on the development of Africa. So it's not only PAP, but if you ask me about PAP, PAP is fully seized of the issue of terrorism and the Committee on uh, International Cooperation and Conflict Resolution is working very hard to ensure that first of all its members understand the issue of terrorism, the causes and also what mechanisms exist on the African continent to address the issue and also to clearly identify the role of the Pan-African Parliament in ensuring that we have a safe continent. Um, what is your comment on terrorism when you, we look at it within the framework of uh, human rights? Yes, uh, wherever there is terrorism, there is gross violation of human rights. Because if you look at the causes and the target groups, it has a lot of human rights implications. Terrorists attack people, innocent people, either because uh, they find themselves in the wrong place during the terrorist attack. For example, if you look at the incidences all over the world, not only Africa, if you go to France and other countries, you know, sometimes innocent tourists are uh, targeted. Uh, people are praying in the mocks, they are targeted. People are in the church, they are targeted. Weddings, there are even wedding gatherings that where people have been targeted and killed unnecessarily for having no idea, no hands in the purpose for which the tourists are acting. So in situations like that, there is gross violation of human rights because you instill fear in people to gather. You instill fear for people to move around. That means you enslave people. You, you limit them to a certain place because they are so afraid that they don't know where the next terrorist, terrorist is going to be hit. So it affects the movement of people. It affects the enjoyment of the rights of people. People are in a wedding. Wedding is a sacred uh, and also a happy occasion because it's one of the highest uh, values in the family institution. You know, the family is, is an arrangement of, of husband and wife coming together. So when you hit those innocent groups, people that are just enjoying their rights, you, you violate their rights. And uh, we have seen also terrorism in which people are held as hostage. Most hostages are done by terrorists, uh, uh, hold them to ransom so that uh, governments are asked or individuals or families are asked to pay huge sum of ransoms. Terrorist movements are also targeted at maybe the media who would, uh, you know, try to explain to the world, you know, what is happening, like if you go to what is happening in Mosul uh, and in other places where currently there is war. They also attack these people. We have seen cases where the media, media personnel have been killed. They have been uh, attacked. Some of them are beheaded. So it's really, it's very much linked with human rights uh, issues. And where do we place uh, the youth? Well, the youth are becoming very much important as recruits by terrorists. Now we are talking of radicalization. 
you enter into the minds of the youth who may already be disgruntled because they are not employed, they don't have the necessary skills, and they feel that the society is not really taking care of them. The society is not uh, uh, putting their interest first. So terrorists find this group very vulnerable and ready recruits and tell them that, look here, uh, you, you, can, you, can, you can help in the fight to ensure that uh, your governments are responsive to your needs, you know, by joining us. Or you can help in the fight to actually uh, call the attention of the world to your plight by being radicalized, by becoming a terrorist, uh, because they appeal to their, their, their conscience that uh, they have nothing to lose. Most of these youths don't have children, they don't have wives, and uh, so they, they, they appeal to their mind, the, what we call conscientization. They conscientize them that uh, they are supposed to be enjoying the same rights and privileges you know, as, as eminent citizens of the country. They tell them that the youth constitute the greater majority of the population in any country and that they are the future leaders, but that uh, for them to be future leaders, they should be adequately prepared. They should have access to the basic social services, but they are not having. So what do they have to lose? They, they encourage them to take arms and terrorize people, and, uh, and, they, and they, many have work that they do. They give them drugs so that uh, when they act, they are not really uh, in a sober state of mind. And under the influence of drug, you know, they can do anything. Yeah. So PAP will be having uh, programs directed at the youth? Well, especially when this year, the African Union theme this year is harnessing the demographic dividends of the population, especially the youth population. And therefore, every AU institution is trying to align their activities in line with the AU theme for this year. And uh, you cannot really discuss the issue of terrorism, the issue of radicalization, without also discussing the most vulnerable uh, uh, group, which is the youth. So uh, that is why, in fact, uh, in the discussion of the terrorist uh, activities in Africa, the youth is going to be very key. How do we empower our youth? How do we make sure that our youth have skills how do we decrease the discontentment of our youth? In, in both rural and urban areas, the youths in the urban areas are, 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 more bet, are better off than the youth in the rural areas, especially where amenities are very few and far in between. And therefore, you have to make sure that you provide the same services in both rural and urban areas to keep the youth engaged, to keep them productive. But when the youths are idle, then they are ready recruits for rebels, for, ter ter for terrorists, and for all these dissident movements in Africa. And we are also seeing that because our youth are not employed, they are traveling, leaving their countries, and they are traveling across the, the globe such in search of, 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 of work, in search of green pastures. And when they get to these destinations, if they, they are, their aim is not fulfilled, then you know they are easily recruited into this uh, terrorist movement. They are easily radic radicalized. Yeah. Uh, lastly, Dr. Uh, Lahai, um, is PAP cooperating with uh, other regional and continental bodies to uh, counter terrorism? Yes, we are just one of the, the, the organs of the African Union. In fact, today we will have uh, members from the Peace and Security Council of the African Union to actually come and update the members <clears throat> on the program of the African Union with regards to peace and security. What are they doing in order to curb terrorism? What uh, institutional and, and institutional framework and legal framework exists in, within the area? And uh, how will this institutional framework or legal framework work? And uh, so, so we are cooperating not only with the African Union, but also the regional economic communities and other specialized groups. For example, today we have a, a professor in the University of Pretoria who works on terrorism. He's going to provide uh, the basis for his work on terrorism, the 
the model law that he helped to develop with the African Union on terrorism. And he will, he will help the, the members of the Pan-African Parliament. He will get into their minds to help them see how terrorists think, how terrorists think, who are these people? What are their situation? Because really, they are a complex bunch of human beings with maybe a different mindset. You don't know what is going on in their minds. You can be living with somebody who is a terrorist without knowing. You can live with a youth who is being radicalized without knowing. They normally live a very peaceful life. They, they, have a, they, they, they use the peaceful life to shield their, their radicalization. That is why a lot of parents, when they find out that it is their children, you know, that have been radicalized and have been involved in bombing, they are shocked because sometimes the children shows no trace at all that they are being radicalized, that they are working with terrorist group, that in fact, you know, they are members of this terrorist group until either they are caught or when they are killed and their identity is revealed. Then it is a big shock to families, husband, wives. Some wives have been very shocked to learn that their husbands, you know, have been radicalized or they are terrorists. So these are all the things that we will be talking with about today. Thank you, Honorable Dr. Nahai, for having us this interview. Thank you.